All right. Um, although we had class canceled on Friday, homework four is still going to be due on Wednesday the 9th. So um, the nodal method we finished up, and um, so you know, none of the information you need to solve homework for has been delayed because of the school cancellation on Friday. So that deadline will stay as Wednesday. Um, I do want to give you some hints on one of the problems on that assi assignment. So we'll spend a bit of time talking about that problem before we get into this Hardy Cross method, which is uh, the primary topic of today's class. So here's that problem. Just to give you an idea, um, there's water in a reservoir that has an elevation of 25 meters. And so the water's flowing out of that reservoir into this pipe network. And then the water is exiting the pipe network here at junction D. And it's also exiting the network from junction B into this lower reservoir. And you'll notice that water is also exiting, also going into the network at junction C. So there's two places the water goes in and two places the water goes out. And what we don't know is we don't know what's the flow rate exiting the reservoir. And by the way, that same flow rate will be entering the lower reservoir. So however much goes from this higher reservoir into A, that's the same amount that exits from B to the lower reservoir because of continuity. Remember, flow in equals flow out. So if if point two comes in at junction C and point two goes out at junction D, then that means anything that flows into the network at junction A is going to be the same flow rate that exits the network at B. Okay, so what you're trying to figure out here is how much goes in and out of the reservoirs and then what's the flow rate through each pipe. Now remember, what are the things that affect the flow rate through the pipe? It's things like the diameter of the pipe, the length of the pipe, the friction factor. So that's going to govern whether to get from C to D, how much of it is going to go from C to A, how much of the flow is going to go from C to B. So the, the direction that the water flows depends on the energy situation. So um, you'll notice here I've provided the, the F value for, for the fully turbulent flow assumption. You know, how you'd calculate the, the Jane equation when you're assuming that the Reynolds number is really high. That's what you should do in the first iteration of solving this problem because you don't know what the flow rate through the pipes is, but you need to be able to calculate this resistance factor R. So R just stands for resistance and it includes all of the terms that affect the flow resistance through a pipe. So the friction factor times the length and then 2GA squared times D. So this energy equation that we looked at in a previous class on Wednesday, this is just remember the energy equation saying the head at two is the head at one minus the losses. Now here we're just only accounting for <coughs> friction losses and we're neglecting for now the local losses. So R just represents the effect of pipe friction, but it's saying the head downstream is the head upstream minus the losses. So this energy equation presumes that water is going from one towards two. So here's the method that you follow to solve this. And the handout itself has several different um, uh, steps. Like on, on the handout with the assignment, I give you some tips, but I wanted to talk you through it um, here today as well. You first of all have to guess the flow direction because you don't even know that. And so let's just assume that water is going from C towards A and from C towards B. So once you make that initial guess, then by assuming a flow direction in the pipe, you wouldn't be able to assume a guess where continuity isn't satisfied. So think about it. the flow couldn't go from A towards C and from B towards C because then you'd have water entering junction C from three directions and that that couldn't work because then uh, there would be inflow but no outflow. But you could, as a first guess, you could say this, like that would be a valid first guess, that water's going from A to C and is going from C to B. Because then you'd have 
water going into the junction from two directions and then exiting the junction in one. So you could do that, but just as a first guess, let's say it's this. Okay, so you have to make a guess that satisfies continuity, and then you would consider where you know the head and what is the head at another spot. So does anybody have a marker? I should have grabbed one when I was upstairs. Anybody have a Y marker? You're going to save me, huh? Good. As long as it's dry erase. Thank you. All right. So the head at C. If these are the flow directions, then we would say the head at C is the head at B plus, because if this is the flow direction, if it's going from C towards B, then there's going to be more head at C. So it would be plus R Q squared. So the location downstream has less head, the location upstream has more. And so now we know the head at B. The head at B is 20 meters because it's connected to that tank. So we could say the head at C is 20 plus R Q, and what I mean is Q B C squared. So the flow through pipe B C. Now I also know the head at C in terms of what's going on through pipe A C. And so another equation I know is I know the head at C is the head at A plus R Q A C squared. And then, of course, the head at A is 25 meters. So this is one equation. And the other equation is the head at C is 25 plus RQAC squared. So this is another equation. And the final equation that I know is continuity. So consider what I know about junction C. I also know that QBC plus QAC is equal to 0 0.2 cubic meters per second. All right. So now with these equations, I can um, set these equal to each other, right? Because it's the head at C is equal to the head at C. So I could say 20 plus RQBC squared is equal to 25 plus RQAC squared. Okay, so this relates BC and AC, and so does this. So I could rearrange this one to say QBC is 0 0.2 minus QAC. And just substitute this, put that one down in there. OK, so the objective of all of that is to find out what would be the flow through AC and what would be the flow through BC. So you're going to solve for a flow rate. Um, and then once you know the flow rate, you'd have to find a new F value. Because the first F value we found just based on the fully turbulent flow assumption. And so in a second iteration, you would update to find out like what is a revised F value. And that'll slightly adjust the flow rates as well. But we could do that same process about junction D. You know, we could say the head at D, like you'd have to assume a flow direction. So, you know, maybe the flow direction for this next one is I'm going to assume that the water is going this way, just as an assumption. It may not be true. It may be that the water's going the other direction. But so now if I'm doing junction D, I'd say, um, head at D is the head at A minus the R Q 
a d squared. And so it's minus because location d is downstream of location a. And then I'd say the head at d is the head at b minus the loss through that pipe. So that's just a little bit of a hint on how to solve that homework problem is basically you're analyzing at junction C and at junction D in order to find the, um, the flow through each. And if you get a solution where the flow rate is like the square root of a negative number, then that tells you your flow assumption, like the direction that you assumed was wrong. So if, if, you, if your solution is real and positive, then that means your flow, uh, flow direction assumptions were correct. Thank you. Um, but you still do need to iterate based on updating the F value. So any questions about that? Maybe make, will make more sense as you actually start to begin the calculations. Um, now, what we're going to talk about today is um, called the Hardy-Cross method or the loop method. And we can use it for more sophisticated and complicated water systems than the nodal method can be used for. If you've got a lot of different pipes and you wanted to find out how much flow is going through each of these pipes, then the loop method would be um, usable for that. Uh, it requires a lot of iterations depending on how many um, sections there are in the network to balance the flows out. And uh, you have to, you could do it by hand, but it's really time consuming. You can do it with a spreadsheet, and we will. It takes some time to set up, but you know, the iterations and the convergence is relatively quick once we do. Um, but uh, the computer method, like um, WaterCAD and WaterGEMS, uses this Hardy Cross method as well. So it's powerful, but it takes some time to learn the software. So the Hardy-Cross method is the basis for a lot of hydraulic design that we do today. And, um, and um, so before you start using those automated software packages, I think it's important to know what's going on in the background so that you can understand the limitations of what the model suggests. And um, whenever you are using the Hardy-Cross method, it assumes that the head loss through the pipe is related to uh, flow resistance. And so there's this general form of head loss where if you're using the Darcy-Wiesbach equation, N is 2. If you're using the Hazen-Williams uh, Hazen equation, then N is 1.85. And uh, you have to calculate the R value for every pipe in the system. And uh, R can be calculated just by the Darcy-Wiesbach equation, or you could use the uh, Hazen-Williams equation, depending on what data you're given, whether it's a C value or the equivalent sand roughness. So this is how we're going to calculate R, since we're going to use the Darcy-Wiesbach equation. You can see it's the friction factor times the length in the numerator and the denominator 2g a squared times d. So just to get some practice calculating R values, I'd like you to, for the pipe that's described here, find the R value where um, you're going to determine the F value by determining the Reynolds number of the flow through the pipe. And this is a concrete pipe that has an equivalent sand roughness of 1.6 millimeters. So I'm going to pause this for just a second. OK, just to preserve as much time as possible for the uh, Hardy-Cross component, of the example. Let's just take a look at how we had calculated R. Jump straight to that. Uh, so starting off by knowing the flow rate and the pipe's diameter, we calculate the area and the velocity of flow through the pipe. And once we know those things, then we can determine in the Reynolds number. And I guess uh, in the problem statement here, it said that uh, didn't mentioned specifically that it was water, but I think that's the, uh, the default liquid. It's safe for you to assume is it's water, so that's what we get the uh, kinematic viscosity from. Um, so we should get that the F value here is 0 0.0242, and then once you substitute that into the equation for R, 
this particular pipe has a resistance of 0.715. And so then if we wanted to know how much head loss there was through the pipe, we just multiply the flow rate squared by this R, and then that would give us the head loss in units of length. Did anybody else get uh, 0.715 for the resistance? All right. So that's just uh, laying the foundation for this method that we're going to talk about next, um, the Hardy-Cross procedure. So here's the problem. Just as our uh, first exposure to the method, let's assume that the resistance through the pipe is given. Uh, the reality is, is when we get more sophisticated and we work our second example, then we're going to calculate the R and the R value will change in each iteration because as our guess of the flow rate changes, so does the, um, uh, so does the flow resistance because you know, it's a function of F value, which is a function of the flow velocity and so on. But uh, this, this method, you first of all would identify um, the, uh, the number of loops that are going to be analyzed. And so here you can see that there's two loops. And the n value that you use in this formula is determined by whether you're using the Darcy-Wiesbach equation for friction loss or the Hazen-Williams equation. And so we're going to use Darcy-Wiesbach for ours, and so n would be 2. Um, when it says define direction, can I use that marker again? I'm sorry, I actually should have held on to that. The flow direction clockwise is positive, thanks. So uh, anytime flow is going in the clockwise direction, we're going to assume that that's a positive flow. And if it is going against clockwise, then that will be a negative flow. Now here's the tricky part. Um, assigning a guess to the, uh, to the flow rate. Um, in this first example we're going to work, you'll notice that I think if you open up the, uh, the template file, so let me download that so we're all looking at the same thing. All right, so um, we're going to name the uh, pipes based on junction labels. So this pipe across the top is pipe 1, 2. This diagonal pipe would be pipe 1, 3, and so on. So um, the steps that it's saying here, uh, assign, label the pipes and the loops. Uh, we're going to call this lower loop loop 1, and the upper loop is loop 2. So you know the junctions are already assigned and so on. But what we need to do by hand is assign guess flow rates. And so my suggestion is, you know, get us a piece of scratch paper and let's just assume certain guess flow rates, but we, the way that we know what to guess is the only rule is you have to honor continuity at each junction. So just as a starting point, consider that we know flow is going in at this junction, uh, which we call junction 4, and there's 100 units of flow going into junction 4. Let me write this up on the whiteboard. Since I suggest that we do this by hand, we've got um, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if there's 100 units coming in, then let's assume that the flow goes from 4 towards 3 and um, from 4 towards 1. Now you can choose any flow rates you want, like this 100, maybe it all goes towards 3. Now that's not realistic. Probably it's going to be split in part by these R values. And the higher the R, we're going to expect that there would be relatively less flow going through there. But just to show that the method can make up for even bad first assumptions, let's say that we assume it's 30 going from 4 to 3 and 70 going from 4 to 1. And so at junction 4, continuity is honored because there's 100 in and 100 out. Okay. The other place where we know 
there's a flow out is here at one there's the diagram says there's 20 going out and then there's 30 going out at three and then at two it is 50 going out okay so 100 in and 100 out so that continuity is honored in that sense um, so if there's 50 going out then let's just say it's 25 that's feeding it from pipe 1 3 and 25 that's feeding it from 2 3 so continuity is honored at junction 2 now what has to be happening at junction 1 we have 70 going in at 1 and then 45 going out so far based on the other assumptions we've made so then what does that tell us about pipe 1 3 it means all the remaining flow that's right needs to go from 1 towards 3 and so 70 minus 20 gives us 50 minus 25 means that it's 25 going through that flow rate and so now check at junction 3 is continuity honored 50 in plus 25 in so that's 55 going in and 55 going out so that's kind of the tricky part sometimes is that initial guess but remember what we said is clockwise is positive so this direction is positive I wish that was a little bit less sloppy I apologize let me draw that neater and larger because we are going to need to put this data into our spreadsheet so it's 30 25 25 25 70 and then of course we've got these external ins and outs the hundred in 30 out, 50 out, and 20 out. Okay. And it was junction 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right. And the lower loop is loop 1. Clockwise positive, loop one, loop two. Let's open up the spreadsheet here and start translating what we've assumed into this template file here. So we're in iteration one. We're going to start with loop one. And the pipe I want to enter data for in loop one is pipe one three. So I'm going to call this like, I'm going to put in the, the quotation mark so that I can do 1-3. I think if, if I just type in 1 minus 3, it's going to do like a date. 1-3, yeah. So I want quote 1-3. All right, so pipe 1-3, the N value is 2, and the R value for that pipe is given as 3. All right, now let's uh, put in pipe... 1-4 and also pipe 1 uh, pipe 3-4 so we're going to enter in all of the data for loop 1 it's always an n value of 2 the r values for uh, 1 4 is 6 cuz that's what it says there the r value for pipe 3 4 is 5 okay now let me put in the flow rates. Now from the perspective of loop 1, look at the direction of this 25. I said it's from 1 towards 3. So that is clockwise, which means it's positive 25. So I'm going to put in 25. Pipe 1, 4, the water's flowing in the clockwise direction, so it's positive 70. Pipe 3, 4, Look at the direction of that. It is against clockwise, and so negative 30, because it's opposed to the clockwise direction within the perspective of loop 1. Let me now um, 
through this r times q times absolute value of q. So equals r times q times abs for absolute value of q. And so that's f14. I can't click on the cell location because my formula is in the way. So I just have to type in f14 there. So r times q times absolute value of q. So any questions so far? Is there something I went too fast on? Okay, so I can just drag this down through the other two pipes in the network. Now, what about n times r times absolute value of q? So n times r times abs of q. All right. I can drag that down through the other pipes. Now, I need to add up these three and these three. So I'm going to do sum and add those three up. And same thing over here, sum to add those three up. I wish I had put the formula in this spreadsheet. Let's see, maybe it's on the second page? No, it's not. Let me paste it over from here. This is the formula that we're going to use for this next one, delta Q. Okay, so to get delta Q, it is equals, because we're going to type in an equation, the negative of this divided by that. I'm going to type that formula in again. Equals minus this divided by that. Equals minus this divided by that. You may wonder, why are we typing that equation in three times? Why not just like anchor the reference and drag it down? We don't want to do that, because then we wouldn't be able to create additional iterations. And so it's better to just type the formula in three times this, around, this time around. So then the corrected flow rate is your initial flow rate plus the delta Q. So this initial flow rate plus the correction gives you a corrected flow rate. So now we have an updated guess of how much flow is going through each of those pipes. Now let's take a look at loop 2. Loop 2 has pipes 1-2 pipe 2-3 and pipe, oops, 2-3 and pipe 1-3. Okay, n is just going to be 2 for all of these. The r values are, we can look up the r values, so pipe 1, 2, it's r value of 1, pipe 2, 3, it's an r value of 2, Pipe 1, 3, R value of 3. Now, let's put in our guess flow rates. We'll look back onto our figure. So pipe 1, 2, what was our guess flow rate? Pipe 1, 2, positive 25, because it's in a clockwise direction. So positive 25. Pipe 2, 3. 25, but it's against the clockwise direction, so I'm going to say negative 25. Now, pipe 1, 3. From the perspective of loop 2, our initial guess was negative 25. Now look how that's different. When we were looking at loop 1, that flow was a positive value, because from the perspective of loop 1, the flow through that pipe is clockwise. But now when I'm in loop 2, going from 1 towards 3 is anti-clockwise. So it's a negative value. But I'm not going to put in negative 25 because I have an updated guess for what the flow rate is. Back in iteration 1, I came up with a better estimate of what's the flow through that pipe. This. My initial guess was would have said 
negative 25. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to always use the most recent guess for the flow rate. So instead of type, just typing in like my manually guess value, I'm going to say equals negative of that common pipe from the other loop. So the negative, because when I change perspectives into loop two, what before was a positive flow is now a negative flow. So that's just a little trick that you're going to have to remember. When you are putting in these flow rates, always start with your most recently calculated value of the flow. So then we can do this, this stuff, you know. I can just copy. I can copy all of this in a single step, I think. Control C, Control V. So let's just make sure what it's doing here. It's doing R times Q times absolute value of Q. And here it's summing it up. So that's good. The one thing that's screwy is I don't need to see that much precision. I'm going to turn that down a little bit just so it's not distracting to see all that nonsense precision. Do the same there. All right, so we've got our correction factor. And then so then the corrective flow rate is your initial value plus the correction. So we've got updated flow rate values. OK. So we finished our first iteration. We went in with some guesses of what the flow rates may be. And this is coming out of what it's trying to do is it's trying to balance the energy. Do you remember the rule that we said about that ski resort? The general idea with this is it doesn't matter what route you take to get from the top of the mountain to this restaurant. It doesn't matter which way you go, but the energy loss is the same. Well, what this approach is doing is it's trying to balance out the flow rates so that regardless of whether you go from one to two directly or if you went a different route, the, uh, the energy loss would be the same. So that's kind of what's going on in the background here is through a couple of iterations, it's going to make sure that number one, continuity is honored at each of the junctions. So flow in equals flow out. But then the other part of it is it's balancing the energy losses through each pipe. OK, so let's now look at iteration two. So just type in the number two here, iteration two. And now we can copy a lot of the other stuff that we've already typed in, like all of these details are the same. So I'm just going to Control C and Control V to paste it. So the pipe names, the N values, the R values are the same. When we move on to a more sophisticated example on Wednesday, our R values will be updated because we're going to calculate different R values with our corrected Q. But just so that we learn the form of the method, Let's not fixate too much on the changing F values yet. All right, so flow rates. We wouldn't want to just start over with the flow rates that we initially guessed. The rule is always use the most recently calculated flow rate. So what's our most recently updated calculated flow rate for 1, 3? It's this. So I'm going to say equals the negative of that. That's my most updated guess of the flow rate. And I do the negative because I'm getting that flow rate from a different loop. I'm in loop one, and I'm getting that flow rate from loop two. So the perspective of the sine flow direction relationship is different. Okay, So what's my guess value of pipe one four flow? It's here. Pipe three four. My most recently updated 3, 4 is that one. OK, so now we can do all of this. Con just highlight the entire section. Control C to copy it. Control V to paste. And look at the delta Q is getting smaller, which is a good sign. 
That means you're getting closer to convergence if it's not having to correct as much. Okay, so now let's put in the flow rates for the second loop. So my best guess of the flow rate through one, two is this flow rate. Pipe two, three is this flow rate. And pipe one, three equals the negative of that. So it's the negative sign because I'm looking at the flow rate from the other loop where the definition of what's positive and what's negative has a different perspective. So I've got my updated flow rates and uh, I can just highlight this um, to get the formulas, you know. Control C and Control V. And again, the delta Q is getting smaller. So we're headed in the right direction. And how do we know when we're finished? Well, it's when the change in delta Q is very small. So for the third iteration, this is going to be pretty easy to do the third iteration because I've got the pattern of everything set up. All of the relative references are set. So now I just have to type in 3 for iteration 3. And then all the rest of this I can copy and paste just in one big control C and control V. And now look how the delta Q, the correction factor, is getting vanishingly small at this point. That basically means the flow rate has converged. So the telltale signs is that pipe 1.3 looks like the flow is 1.51. 1.51. It, it's not changing from jump to, uh, from step to step. The flow rates have stabilized for pipe 3, 4 as well. 52.3. 52.3. So there's no more correction that needs to be done. These are the final flow rates. And then what we need to check and see is, is flow in equals flow out. So let's just check that for our final flow rates, uh, let's put in the network. Okay, so it tells us if this is one, two, three, and four. Okay, it's telling us that one, three is 1.51. One. And it's this direction, 1.51. Because from the perspective of loop one, it's a negative value. Yeah. All right, pipe one, four, it's saying is 47.7. Okay, so 47.7. And then pipe three, four, negative 52.3. So this direction, 52.3. And then um, in loop two, pipe one, two is 29.2. And then pipe two, three is negative 20.7. So up 20.7. So what we could do is, along with these flows out and in that are defined, you know, it was saying, for example, here at junction 2, it's 50 out. At junction 1, it's 20 out. At junction 4, it's 100 in. And at junction 2, it's 30 out. What we'll see is that continuity is balanced at each of these junctions. If there's 100 coming in at 4, 52 of it goes through pipe 3, 4, 47.7 goes through pipe 1, 4. So continuity, check. At junction 4, we're good. Check out junction 2. 29.2, 20.7, that adds up to the 50 that's going out. So check, we're good at junction 2. Check junction 1. You've got um, 47.7 going up, 20 going out here. Continuity is honored at each of the junctions. So that's where we're going to leave things for today. Save this.
because we're going to work on this second example later on. But uh, just to refresh your memory, the next homework assignment, uh, homework four, is still due on Wednesday, that nodal method. So let me know if you've got questions on that. I'll see you in class on Wednesday. Thank you.